Hey guys, it's Margie, and today's movie review is of a 1965 made-for-TV film, It's Cinderella, and this is the film that was a remake of essentially the 1957 film, um, which was a film production of Rodgers and Hammerstein's adaptation of Cinderella. So, yeah, kind of hard to explain. But anyway, this film had Ginger Rogers, Walter Pigeon, Celeste Holm, Joe Van Fleet, Leslie Ann Warren, Stuart Damon, Pat Carroll, and Barbara Ruick. It was directed by Charles S. Dubin, and music was by, obviously, Rodgers and Hammerstein, pretty much. Um, they don't tell you who the editing is by. They don't tell you who um, the cinematography is by. It was written by Joseph Schrank, produced by Richard Rogers of Rogers and Hammerstein, James S. Starkley, and Charles S. Dubin, who, as I just mentioned, also directed it. Okay, guys, I think everybody knows the plot of Cinderella. So, basically, the plot is, you know, Cinderella, but it's m with music. And they did a couple little different things with the um, plot, the basic plot, the normal, but not really anything worth mentioning. Performances for this one. Um, I'm going to start with Leslie Ann Warren, who played Cinderella. This was actually her first film um, that she had pretty much anything more than an extra in. I mean, she had one other film to her name, but she had like a really tiny role. I thought she did well. There was some overacting. You're going to hear me say this a lot. There was overacting uh, in this film, but it's kind of supposed to be like stagey, you know, and more of a um, Broadway kind of feel, I would say. That's kind of more what they what it came across as to me. So I didn't really mind the overacting because I was expecting it, and, you know, I think that's how they were instructed to do and yada yada. So I'm giving giving passes on that. I will say that Leslie Ann Warren's singing left much to be desired. Um, <laughs> I am not bashing her or anything like that. I'm just saying that, you know, she was young, and I don't think that she did that well in the singing department. But I thought she did okay, and again, the overacting. But she, I think she was told you that. She's green as the grass. I mean, good grief. We'll give her some slack. Okay. Ginger Rogers plays um, the prince's mother in this film. I thought she was good. Really small role. Again, a little overacting, a little stiff, etc. Um, yeah, and this was obviously later, later in her career. This is like one of the last films she did, and she was getting older by this time. So, anyway, same thing with Walter Pigeon. Um, I thought he was good. I did. And a few of his lines, you know, were a little stiff, but again... What, I mean, what do you, what, the lines for this movie, I'm not saying the writing was bad, but, like, they pretty much just say what they need to say, you know, and so how are you going to make that be more, like, emotional and stuff, I don't know, so, to pass on that, everybody else that I'm, um, that I mentioned, Celeste Tone, Joe Van Fleet, Stuart Damon, Pat Carroll, and Barbara Ruick were all good, however, um, the two ladies that played the stepsisters, I felt like were a little over the top, but I felt like they were supposed to be like that, and they're playing evil stepsisters, so, yeah, get the, give them slack on that. Um, the directing on this is actually not that bad, but it feels like you're watching, essentially, a stage production, because the uh, quality of the cameras are really... Not actually pretty bad, and it's so ridiculously low budget. Like, within the first, you know, 45 seconds of the film, you know, oh, wow, this was made, like, on a soundstage for TV. You know, it's so obvious. It reminded me of, um, I don't know if any of you watched um, Mr. Rogers when you were growing up. I did. Um, but it reminded me of Mr. Rogers in that it's so obvious, you know, you're on a soundstage, and... I don't know. It was so it's not, it doesn't really feel like a typical movie. The music was good and they kind of adapted it um from what the original, you know, the 1957 movie. I thought it was good. I really enjoyed the songs for this. Um the score and everything was great, but a few of the singers lacked a little bit and just kind of, you know, talked song a little bit, but you know, eh, you know, it was it was good on the whole. The writing was good. For 
budget, time, money, etc. I mean, it's pretty much just say what you need to say. A few lines, you're like, oh, come on. The costumes in this were actually pretty, pretty, some, pretty something else, especially the dress that um, Leslie and Warren wore to the ball. It was really lovely. Um, but... Uh, the, I thought that the stepdaughters and stepmothers' costumes were a little too over the top, but it's just, they're kind of trying to make them look foolish and silly and wealthy and all that. So, pass on that. The choreography was really good for this movie. Really, really was. And I normally don't touch on this, but this is like the only notes, you know. The, these are like the nicer things of the film. So, um, oh, I guess I said overall, uh, um, is overacting, but it's kind of supposed to be like that because it's more like a stage feel and because, you know, a lot of the people that were in this movie, aside from Ginger and uh, Walter Pigeon, were green. Well, like, the, the lead was green. And a lot of these people, like, were from the stage and they just, you know, anyway, it's got that kind of feel to it. The songs were lovely, as I mentioned. Um, so, yeah, anyway, Parents Guide, I don't have a thing to say um, <laughs> about this. Parents Guide, y'all, no language, um, maybe a little bit of cleavage. Not really, though, honestly. No sexual content, no violence and gore, and no um, drug and alcohol. So, yeah, it's clean as a whistle. Um, it's like an hour and 20 minutes long, I think. So, it's, it's you know, pretty short. But I was actually surprised you know, that they got it that long. <laughs> um, it does drag a little bit towards the end. But it's like, you know, only because I've seen Cinderella in so many adaptations and so many times that it was just kind of like, okay, I know what's happening. Can we hurry up and get there? So, Anyway, um, and I know many of you are saying this kind of after the review. I know many of you are saying, why in the world are you reviewing this movie? I've been actually wanting to see this one and the 1957 one with Julie Andrews for a really long time. So I finally got to see it, and obviously I wasn't expecting it to be at all like what it was actually was. But, you know, I thought considering budget, guys, it really is all about money a lot of times and they didn't have any, like, any budget for this film seriously so considering all of that I thought it was good I'm glad I saw it checked off the list um I don't know if I told you guys or not but I'm pretty diehard Rodgers and Harrison fan so I was excited to see you know anything that had their name tied to it so anyway guys considering budget and green people and you know all this kind of stuff I do want to make one more special note about the directing Charles S. Dubin who directed this has directed so much television. It is like like episodes, like TV shows and episodes. It is ridiculous. He has literally directed everything. So um, that's kind of, you know, again, that's the kind of directing style that he used. So anyway, that kind of helps you get an idea for what, you're, what you'll be seeing if you watch this movie. I'm giving this film two and a half stars out of five, considering everything. And it's not one of my favorite adaptations of the Cinderella story, but obviously the um, Die Hard Rodgers and Hammerstein fans will want to check it out, as I did. And would I watch this movie again? No, I wouldn't. But it was good to get off the list. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for checking out my review of the 1965 film Cinderella. I hope you enjoyed it. Please subscribe, and I'll talk to you guys later.